So just how should you study computer science? Should you learn it by yourself? Or is it worth going to university in 2018? Well, as someone who has experience with both of these to certain extents, I think I can help you answer that. Now, this is a hard question to answer because there are just so many factors that go into it, namely the cost of going to university, which I will cover later on. It's very popular nowadays to say, screw university, I'll just learn it all myself. It's become a kind of romanticized path that you just learn everything you need to using free online material. Can it be done? Well, I'll give you my take right after this. Malduino is the Arduino-based bad USB. Inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper. With the Elite version, simply store and select between up to 16 different scripts on a microSD card. To find out more, see the link in the video description. So, is it possible to learn everything university teaches you just by yourself? Well, for sure. I spent more time in my first year of university watching YouTube videos to learn the course's content than I did at actual lectures. Though, let's just make sure we're on the same page here. I think when people say they're going to teach themselves computer science, what they actually mean is that they're going to teach themselves programming, and these two are just entirely different. The problem here, from my perspective, is that when you go to teach yourself programming, you're working from the top down. And by that I mean, for example, you might decide you want to learn web development and say, okay, I need to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ruby, wh whatever it might be. And, and that's great. You can learn that to a proficiency level using free online material. Though the problem I see with learning those languages, those frameworks, is that they float on top of the fundamentals that you're really kind of ignoring. It's like trying to construct a building without knowing what the ground is made of. And let's say five years down the road, you get bored of web development and want to move to big data or some other technical field, you're really gonna have a hard time switching over when there's just a lot of fundamental material you just don't know. The issue being is that you don't know what you don't know. So trying to fill in those gaps could be kind of tricky. Whereas with a computer science degree, sure, you'll have teething problems switching between programming languages and professions, but the basics, the fundamentals are always going to be there for you to fall back on in case you want to switch up your profession or programming language. As a crude example, if you've studied computer science and you want to switch from Java to C, for example, you're going to know what a pointer is, you're going to know what a memory address is because you've done that algorithmics module, whatever module it is. But if you haven't done that CS degree, you might not have covered that. And that might be something completely new to you and completely throw you off. What you have to remember is a lot of the stuff you learn in computer science is completely transferable. So switching from one programming language to another is really not an issue because a lot of the basics, a lot of the fundamentals are exactly the same. Though we do have to acknowledge that some people are just insanely good at independent learning. And if you're one of those people that has no problem picking up a 500 page book on computer science and just bombing through it, then maybe a degree isn't something you need. However, these people are an anomaly. There's not many of them. So while it might be a very romanticized path to learn everything yourself and become some kind of prodigy, you have to be real with yourself and just know whether you're the type of person that is capable of, capable of just picking up that book and running with it because most people just can't do it. But again, there are exceptions. It's just having a real good level of self-awareness. So I wanted to cover some questions that have been asked about getting a computer science degree in general and how it may or may not help you. So firstly, do you need a computer science degree to get a job as a developer? Well, yes and no. A lot of jobs will say computer science is required for the job and thus when your application gets to HR, it might just automatically be struck off if you don't have a degree simply because it's an easy way for employers to wean out people who have zero experience. However, if you have the skills required for that job, then whilst you might have a harder time getting your foot in the door, getting past HR, there's no reason why you're any less capable. In fact, if you're really good at learning by yourself, there's a good chance you're gonna have way more projects on GitHub and just be more proactive in general. And there's a good chance you may have created the name for yourself with those projects and employers may even reach out to you to offer you work without you even having to lift a finger. Though again, this is a very romanticized position, which I reckon most people simply aren't capable of. I know many people who watch my videos are interested in cybersecurity. It's definitely in right now. 
So I've been asked whether it's a good idea to just jump straight into a cybersecurity degree and just forget about the computer science. Because after all, cybersecurity is just a subset of computer science. So if you're interested, if you know that's what you're interested in, you might as well jump into that, right? Well, I would issue a word of caution with that because I think a lot of these degrees that are just popping up are simply in response to the massive demand for cybersecurity. I would highly recommend looking at the content of these courses to see what they actually contain because I've had a look at a few of them in preparation for this video and a lot of them seem real basic. So I would be wary with choosing a cybersecurity degree. And even in researching for this video, I looked at what universities offer those type of degrees. And it seems to be only the lower echelon of universities that, you know, the Oxfords, the Cambridges of this world simply aren't offering the cybersecurity degrees. Even some of the middle ones, they're just not doing it. And maybe that's for a reason. I don't know. But that's just my observations. And remember, you can always go and get a cybersecurity master's after you've done your degree. Another question people has was, is the maths hard in computer science? And it's a tough question to answer because it varies a lot based on the university you go to and the content of that degree. For example, the maths at Cambridge's computer science degree are going to be much tougher than, you know, the lower echelon universities. So do check the content of the course for the university you want to go to. But in general, there is a decent amount of maths in computer science. Think discrete maths, linear algebra, uh, logic, that kind of thing. Many people have said to me that they can't go and study computer science right now because they don't know how to program. And that's just com a complete misconception. University will teach you absolutely everything from the ground up for programming, as if you've never even heard of what a programming language is. So here are some slides from my first programming lecture at university. And as you can see, they just start from the absolute basics. It's really not something to worry about. So overall, when it comes to the question of going to university or not, there's no real litmus test. It just takes a ton of self-awareness to know how you learn best. I would say if you are very much a beginner, and by that I mean you've got your Hello Worlds out the way, maybe you've done a few small projects in a couple of different programming languages, but other than that, you don't really know what to do to get to where you want to go then I would say a computer science degree is a great option because it just provides you with that framework and support that will enable you to get ahead. Though if you are pretty proficient at programming, maybe you've done work for several clients, and by that I don't mean making websites on Fiverr, that, that doesn't count. <laughs> if you're earning a real decent amount of money through client work, perhaps you do a bunch of bug bounties, whatever it may be, an amount of money that's enough to sustain you, not because you need to be sustained, maybe you're still living with your parents, but if you're earning a decent amount of money, then that's the market telling you that functionally you're already at that level of someone who's already graduated. So maybe you're in a better position to go at it yourself and you'd learn a lot faster that way than having to go through the whole computer science degree. Though at the end of the day, if you honestly believe you can go at it by yourself, there are a ton of online courses that you can go with. For example, for cybersecurity, there is the OSCP, which is an online course I'm sure a load of you will have heard of. And in all honesty, there's not much downside in taking a gap year, going at it by yourself. And if it doesn't go to plan, you could always go to university the next year. Something else I haven't really touched on is the price of going to university. I know it's a massive deal in the US with student debt, though that's not really something I know about. So I'm going to skip over that. Though if you live in a European country where tuition is free or cheap, then I would strongly suggest considering going to university because at that point, there's almost no downside. Given, of course, it is a solid degree and you're not learning HTML. <laughs> and if you do live in the UK, which I do have experience with, uh, where the cost of university is apparently debilitating and will saddle you with debt for the rest of your life, um, don't believe that. It's nonsense. It's a common misconception that a British degree will financially ruin you. I'll leave a link in the description to a video which I urge you to watch if you live in the UK. Watching this video just completely changed my perspective on student debt. So please, please watch that video if you live in the UK. I'm sure there will be disagreements here and leave those in the comments because I want to know what you guys think. Other than that, if you like this video, make sure to like it, subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.